Hi, this is Dr. Pang, and I am doing the overview of the structure of TE-677. I want to make sure you understand before you start uh, how complicated these courses and that it, it, if you know how it is organized, you'll have, it'll be easier for you. There are two major aspects of research-based pedagogy for the diverse learners. First, the learning about the uh, concepts and theories and research behind multicultural education. Most of that comes out of the book. Uh, it will help you understand different um, characteristics such as race, ethnicity, culture, social, sexual orientation, gender, classism, uh, race, racism, uh, religious bias, ageism, exceptionality, and other areas. So that's the first part. It's the book. Then the second part is about the research, the research that should be informing your practice. Many teachers do not understand that research really can help them in the classroom. So I want, I really want you to get used to uh, using the library because it's very, very helpful. It can be very, very helpful. Now, Let's start with the multicultural education section. That's the first, it's on the left in the column in the left. The major question is what is multicultural education and what does it have to do with teaching and what are some of the major theories and uh, strategies that can help you as a teacher? So uh, chapter one is really gives that foundation. What are some of the misconceptions? What are some of the values? What are some of the principles and goals of multi multicultural education? Chapter two then talks about culture. What is culture? It's not just a list of things. It is a very organized set of experiences that created by humans. And we want it to be connected to cognitive learning theory. Uh, so you're going to read the chapters in the book and it will describe what is multicultural education, what are some of the areas in the field, define terms such as prejudice, exceptionality, intersectionality, sexual orientation, classism, homophobia, Islamophobia, classism, uh, and other terms, bullying, stereotypes, and chapter, chapters um, four and five are about the historical, give some historical background to teachers. Why is there so much discussion about Black Lives Matter? Uh, it's part of it is because of our historical experiences as a nation and it is very hard for teachers to understand what people of color have gone through without knowing the history of various groups. Remember, black history is U.S. history. Asian American history is U.S. history. Women's history is U.S. history. Uh, Native American history is U.S. history. All of that. So we should really have a background in the historic experiences of various groups who have contributed and made this country an important one and a country that so many people around the world want, want to come to. The book also talks about the achievement gap in the last chapter and uh, about language and what can be done with English language learners. In California, about 20% of the student population are English language learners. And now I, I uh, want to give you some helpful hits, hints. You will complete some quizzes, not every chapter, but some of the chapters. It is vital that you develop a foundation of understanding of the field so that when you pick an issue from the research side, you will have a strong background in diversity and equity in this country. The book is designed to give teachers a strong grasp of why culture is important in learning and teaching. Most teachers don't really uh, understand that. In fact, many teachers don't even think they have a culture, that their culture is neutral. There's no such thing. Every person 
is a member of many subcultures. Yeah, it, you are not just a member of one or two, but many. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a mother. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you uh, are a tango dancer. Maybe you are a swimmer. All those things can actually be considered subcultures. And teachers need to adopt and believe in a philosophical framework. That will be in chapter one. That framework will help cement you or uh, will help give you a base. So no matter what the trends are, the fads that come through, you will still have your belief system of principles, goals, and ways of thinking of what your goals are for your kids what are you going to try to do that educational foundation is so critical now let's go back to the top here of this overview and talk about the research side so even though you'll be reading in the book about different aspects of multicultural education as you're reading it you should be thinking of how can i use the information about multicultural education in my search for best practices, research-based information. So what instructional goal might you have for your group or for you and your research group that deals with diversity in the classroom? It could be about English language learners. It could be about Asian Americans. And it could be about the culture of Native Americans. It could be about languages. It could be, there's just a million different topics that you could choose, but it, it should have something to do with culture. So maybe you might want to consider how is it best to think about and judge children's literature that present different issues of sexual orientation. So you would look for articles where people have developed criteria and they have tested those criteria. Now, Another question could be, what types of lessons would you like to work on for use in your classroom? Let's say you pick mathematics. Are there ways to use cultural context to teach place value? Did you know that in some languages, not English, but other in many Asian languages, place value is built into the language? So in Japanese, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 11 is not 11, but 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 13 and 14. 15. So that way, the children are learning base 10 place value as they learn language. Unfortunately, it's harder in English because there isn't quite that same kind of um, organization of the language. So the cultural context has made a difference. Maybe you teach mathematics and you want to use word problems. Are there be best, better ways for you to use the language or uh, phrases or the vocabulary in mathematics that you didn't think about? That could be an area or an issue that your group might want to investigate. So in the research side, you're going to go to the library, you're going to, uh, first you're going to get in a group, you're going to get a partner, and you're going to get a partner and a partner within a group. So let's say you have a partner, that's two of you, and then you get with three other pairs of people, that would make six people, and that will make a group. And then you decide on what is the research issue you want to investigate. Then you go to the library. You don't actually have to go there, but you can go to the library via the uh, library website. And you start looking through databases using keywords. Maybe it's culturally relevant teaching. Maybe it's African American students, elementary, and teaching geometry or whatever it is. And then you start searching for jury journal articles. You're Part, you and your partner need to come up with one great article that has data and uh, implications for practice and 
write an annotation and that will be found in the module too. How to write a module uh, annotation, what is it? Then your, your other members of your team are also going to be looking at different articles. These are jury journal articles. You can look it up in the library. You can look it up what a jury journal article is. It is not just something that someone just put in the newspaper. These are actually uh, journals that people have. They're blind review articles. That's, that means they send them out for people to review without their name on it. So uh, the research you look at then is going to be in your little group. So first you're going to do an annotation with a partner. Then you're going to share those annotations and articles with the members of your research team. Then that research team is going to create uh, annotated bibliography. It's kind of like a short literature review. So you'll have a title page. Then you're going to have a summary of the articles that all the people in your group have created and what are the themes. Then you're going to include uh, the annotations in alphabetical order using APA style, which is very, very important. And then you're going to have a list of references in APA format. There are examples on the sidebar so you can find out what it should look like. And then the modules, modules two and three are about going to the library, developing a literature review, and developing an annotation. So you, you need to get your uh, partner and your research group right away that first couple of days of the course so you can begin working on that portion of your research because at the end you're going to take all that information about your short literature review and you're going to create a research video where you summarize information and give suggestions for practice to all the members of your class. So you can see there on the right side of your column there, the second column about research, there are the steps I have listed there on what you're going to be doing. You're going to, you're going to be part of a member of a group. I say four or five, but you could have, I think it'll be six people. Uh, identify a group research issue, to identify the theoretical framework in the article, identify the journal, identify, create the annotation, share this annotation, create the group annotated bibliography, and then you're going to have a, an outline where you develop, you figure out how you're going to explain all this to your audience, and then you're going to create a research video. I hope this is helpful. That I am not interested in so much the grade. I know all of you are interested in the grade, but I'm not. You, you know, you're going to get a good grade if you do the work. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is what are you going to do out there with the kids? What, are you going to be an effective teacher? Can you teach abstract vocabulary? Can you teach phonetic awareness? Can you teach how to teach geometry? Can you teach, uh, you know, whatever your subject area? That's what's most important to me. It's not really the grade. So, I want you to just work hard. You'll get a good grade. Just think this is two parts, a multicultural education section, and then the other part is how do you use research to inform your practice. Thank you.